What's up all Power Ass crew? Now we're going to convert this AC compressor to an air compressor. Now before we get on with the main part of the video, let's talk about a couple options, okay? So what we're going to discuss is this piece right here. What's so important about that? This is your discharge line. This is your intake. This intake line right here is going to be sucking the air into it. The compressor does its business, pushes it out here. It's going to push it out into this air manifold here right there of which I'm gonna have a gauge this is my pressure switch and this is my blow-off valve so the pressure switch is gonna tell when to turn on when to turn off and the blow-off valve means if this this uh, switch was to fail and the compressor keeps pumping this will release air at a predetermined rate a predetermined pressure keep from causing any kind of catastrophic you know, booms or not really it's not gonna blow anything up it's just gonna pop a hose or something like that so with this right here the way I've got it configured now, I only need this. I'm going to take this, screw it right in the back of that, and we'll call it good. But this is the more complicated way of doing things. And the only reason I said it, you, know, you mean complicated. This right here is just super simple. Screw that in, you're done. Really? That's not complicated. It's what I had to do with the compressor to make it this simple. I torque, I'm tearing the compressor apart and greasing everything in here so I do not need to run a oil source into the compressor. What do I mean by oil source? Let's take this off. This that almost dropped. That is your ore then your filter will go in here. So what this is gonna do, you take this screw out right here and you put oil inside this reservoir here. As the air is pulled in through the filter and it comes through this oil system here, it will pull a certain predetermined amount of oil out and put it through the compressor to lubricate everything inside the compressor. That sound, if you elect to use this right, this right here, if you want to use an external oil source, you do not have to do anything to the compressor at all. Nothing. Leave it together. Don't take it apart. Nothing. You don't do it. All you need to do is what I showed you in the first video, how to, how to uh, drill and tap this piece right here to accept airline fittings, quarter, uh, quarter inch uh, MPT thread. So that being said, again, I'm going to reiterate because there may be confusion to some people. If you don't want to tear this apart and do the work inside of it, like I'm going to show you on the video, all you got to do is buy this part right here, screw that in there, screw that in there, and the compressor is fine. But here is the one caveat to that. This is your discharge line, as I said. Air will come out of this and into this, sort of. There's a couple of parts I have not shown you at the moment, that's simply because I don't have them out here. You're going to have a check valve and you're going to have a filter. The filter will need to filter out the oil because what would happen, this oil come through the compressor here, come out the discharge line, you'll be spraying oil out here, and it will be into your tires, your oil lines, everything. Now, if you're running air tools, not such a bad idea, but you don't want that oil here that's, come, that's going to be coming through this. You don't want that in your air line, and you don't want that in your tires. Not, some oils is not good for the rubber, in the case, your tires, okay? So what you'll have to do if you run this, you'll have to have a special filter that separates the oil and water and stuff like that before it goes into the air manifold. And then that little filter will get full every so often. You'll have to drain that filter out and move on with life. Not a big deal. I get it. But I wanted to not have to deal with any of that. So today's video is showing you guys how to tear this compressor apart, how to plug off a certain little place, a certain little hole inside here, and grease everything in here on this end so it takes care of itself. So I do not have to run this oil oil bath, oil method, whatever, air tool oiler. Only thing I got to do is that. Clear? Cool. Let's get on with the video. So just to try to make sure I got this, got this cleared everyone. If you do not want to do all this extra work to the compressor, you will need that external oil, uh, external oil source or air tool uh, air tool oiler, you have to try to get up a minute. So, and, but you'll also need that filter to separate the oil 
from getting into your air and getting into your air lines and your tires and stuff like that when you air your tires back up okay so that is your choice me personally like i said i elected to tear the compressor apart grease the inside of it so it does not need any extra maintenance and that way i can just turn it on and go when i want to i don't have to worry about oh well, crap i forgot to put oil in it or something like that you know i am a very forgetful person so the odds of me forgetting to put oil in that <laughs> or even having oil with me to put in that very likely for me to forget me greasing the inside of this compressor to run without oil helps my mm, memory issues that i don't have to worry about now all right kill let's get over the video now our last video we fabricated this part right here by drilling and tapping okay i'm out this back porch right here for quarter, for a quarter inch NPT. As you can see there. So if you guys didn't see that video, we'll link it up so you guys have been down in the description. So you guys can go check out that video on how I did that. So we're gonna set that aside right now because we that is not the topic for the video. Now as you do this, have you some paper towels ready? Because the oil from the Freon is gonna be all up in this thing. And it can make a little bit of a mess. So I got this towel down right here to catch the junk and flow. Make sure none of my bolts roll off. And the underneath this towel right here, I have a trash bag. So if there's any you know, excess oil stuff, like it sucks through this old junk towel. The surface underneath is going to be all messed up. So first thing we want to do, flip this up on our end here. Get those bolts out. So I was trying to break these bolts loose on my little desk, and this wasn't paying out correctly. It's got my little small battery-powered impact. It didn't want to break them loose, so I had to come out here and bolt it down on the Jeep so I can break these bolts loose back here. So while I'm at it, 10 millimeter, I'm going to go ahead and break those loose. Then I'll take this off the Jeep and finish it up. I was having a problem getting to these 10 millimeter uh, bolts right here because they were under the radiator hose. So I took the compressor off, turned it around 180. And whenever you put your bolts in, just put them in a couple threads. You don't have to take it, you know, tighten it all the way down to the bracket. That's just nothing more than holding the compressor in place to help you turn it out, uh, help you break the, uh, to hold the compressor while you break the bolts loose. That's it, I'll get it out in a minute. Now, it's pretty tight on this clutch. When you go put your wrench in, you may have to put it in just in a sweet spot to get it, but don't unscrew it no too far you want to be able to take the wrench out of that compressor then you get a finger tight or use your opening inside of your wrench to back those out there's some of these bolts that will not come all the way out they're going to hit the clutch and that's okay i'll show you how to do that here in a moment how to take them on out but not taking the bolts completely out so i gotta get to these right here and we'll take the compressor back off don't forget this one way down here at the bottom like i almost did now that we've got the bolts loose let's take them on out now be careful when you take this back cover off, there's some parts that you just don't want to go flying back there. Started out in the house last night and I couldn't break this thing loose. So we're out here today and it's absolutely a wonderful, beautiful day. So let's work outside. Ooh, look at the gooey. And be careful with that gasket, you don't want to damage it. There's a separator plate right there. We need to get that up and apart. So I'm gonna give you some paper towels and I'll be right back. So what you want to do is get it right off here on this side and get you a flat screwdriver. If you twist just right and hang the edge of this uh, valve plate right here, when you twist it, it'll break it loose. Bring it up easy and slow because you don't want to tear up your gaskets. And there you go. And these right here are the little valve reed plate, uh, reed valves. They flat back and forth, which allows it to suck in air or suck in Freon in this case. And whenever it goes, this pit, when the pistons comes up into compression stroke, it slams the valve shut and compresses it to go through the system. So we're going to take some uh, carb cleaner and spray this right here off. Because you don't want all this uh, compressor oil to be getting into your air lines and your tires and stuff like that. So you want to make sure you get all that compressor oil out. Or the Freon oil or whatever. And we'll set this to the side right now. Got her all cleaned up. Set that to the side for the moment. And now we've got your cylinders. And just so you guys can watch it move, I'm gonna turn the clutch. Well, yeah. See how it moves? 
So this is a seven cylinder compressor, obviously. You see the seven cylinders. So what we're also gonna do, we're gonna here in a moment is to clean all that right there off. Now the only holes you gotta worry about is this one and this one. Why? Because that's the locator pins for your valve plate. Okay? What that hole does is as the cylinders are moving the Freon through the sil through the system, it also allows some of that oil to flow back there and lubricate the uh, wobble plate and the thrust bearing that's back on the inside, which we'll break it open on the here in a bit. But this right here, we need to tap that for a quarter twenty. Why? Because we're going to put a quarter twenty set screw down the side there to block off that flow to keep pressure on this side, but not on the back side. We're going to lubricate the wobble plate and bearing stuff on a different method. So take our quarter 20 tap and just gently turn it until you feel it start to bite. And it's aluminum, so it's not going to take a whole lot. And yes, you're gonna, you may get some uh, shavings from the cutting down inside here, but we're going to clear that out here in a little bit. Do a little cut back up. A little more cut back up now if this happens to be the first video you see of this onboard air com uh, conversion you need to refer back to the first video which is when I tapped this piece right here for the quarter 20 I'm sorry for the quarter inch uh, MPT to use airline fittings so you definitely need this right here this is the most common compressor that's in the uh, junkyards right now on uh, Cherokees and such so this will be the easiest one to find yes I would love to score York but those things are getting kind of hard to find this is the uh, Satan 709, very common compressor. Just make sure you get the right bolt patterns, which I demonstrated that in the previous video. And I showed you guys, on the previous video, I showed you guys how to tap this right here for quarter inch MPT. So refer back to that, you need to check it out. So let's finish tapping this right here for the quarter 20. Turn it a little bit, I can feel that bite. Back it up. And you don't really need to go too far because of the uh, set screw isn't very deep to begin with, it isn't very long. And the only thing we're doing is blocking the air passage. Whenever you're doing the onboard air conversion, there's two different ways to lubricate them. One, I'm showing you that I'm going to put grease back here on the wobble plate, eliminating the external oil source. Versus the other way, you got here a discharge and, so, and the uh, suction line. On the suction line side, you will put a like an air tool oiler it'll come out here you pour oil into it they'll suck it inside here it'll feed through here and it'll force all the oil to come through your pistons and all that and force it to go through that hole right there to lubricate your wobble plate and your bearings and stuff so depending on what your method is for lubrication for everything it will be the choice of you know what met, what parts you may need the way i'm doing this i do not need the external oiler I have one on order right now because I'm going to do another one of these compressors to where I show you guys how to do that conversion and using the external oil source. But I'm going to do it this way for this one and like I said on the next one we'll just do a um, external oil source, external oil source method, whatever on the other one. So I've got that tapped and I'm going to use my brake cleaner to clean out the junk. Because you want that clean, we're going to put that set screw in here in just a moment. Just clean out all your boards. And again, the easy way to identify this being the, the hole that you need to plug off for this type of oiling procedure will be, here's all your threaded holes to hold your back plate on. Locator, locator, little be tiny ones. This one has that little offset right there. That will be the one that you'll have to tap for your quarter 20 set screw. And again, if you're gonna use the external source, external oiling method procedure or method or whatever, you do not have to do this part. 
matter of fact, if you use the external oil source, which I'll show you in a different video, whenever I get the part in, also I'll talk about it on this video before I release it, that um, you don't have to break it open at all. So Now here's what we're using. Quarter 20 by one quarter. Now I picked these up at Lowe's. So they normally come to it to a pack. And I'm going to pop one of these out, put a little bit of a uh, thread sealer on it. Not, it ain't necessarily a thread locker, but it really don't matter what you use on it. This right here is a thread sealant for hydraulic fittings and uh, air fittings. So, but you can use a regular Loctite or whatever you want to do, but I happen to have some of this. That's what I'm using. And it don't take much. You just really want to just a tiny little dab on there. That's all you got to really do. And just snug it up it don't have to be crazy tight okay so we're done with this side we'll take our valve plate put it back in place align up your dot your alignment pins right there and you don't have to do it as long as you don't tear up your gasket you're fine you don't have to put any, no type of sealers or anything like that on it. Just don't tear them up. All right, put those back in place. Oh, yeah. I just saw something else I wanted to do. Look right there. See that little small hole? I'm going to look through my inventory of drill bits and see if I can make that just a little bit bigger. Because the larger you can make that hole, the less restriction you have for airflow coming through. The less restrictions you have, the cooler it will keep the air. Okay? So here's what I did wrong. My thought was if I drilled this hole right here bigger, I would have less restriction for the airflow to come through and it would you know, make the air cooler and build pressure faster blah 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 there is a reason that holds offset and i didn't realize it until after i done made my mistake look right there so i can make a pointer here right there at the end of the island wrench there's a hole i drilled right into it this is the side right here this is your suction side this is your suction cavity here so what i've done made a big leak right here so i've got me some jb weld i'm gonna cram me some jb weld up inside that to plug that off and because yeah i goofed so don't do that leave that hole alone and continue on i'm so bad for messing with stuff i shouldn't be messing with so there you go don't do that so let me fix my goof up now okay i've patched up my goof up now what I did was I took a, just a stick off the ground and some JB Weld, of course I mixed it up and I was forcing the JB Weld from the bottom up until it started feeding out the top right here. Therefore I know I filled up that whole cavity inside that, you know, where I made the drill. So at this point, this is going to mushroom out the top right here a little bit and I'm going to put just a little bit more right there. I just cleaned that off to show you guys for, you know, video purposes. But I'm going to put just a little bit more where I crammed up in which to mushroom it out. When it all cures, it'll make a mushroom top and bottom to seal it up real well and prevent anything from moving inside, which I don't think it's going to because, heck, I've JB Weld, I've used it for all kinds of things for it. pressure, heat, whatever. This stuff just rocks, as most of us already know. So I'm going to put a little dollop on that little gray spot right there, which will create my little mushroom head to keep from pulling through either side. And I've already got it right there. Your seal. The seal for this right here sits right on top of this and just partially down inside that hole. So that sticking up like that's not going to hurt anything, so I'm not going to mess with it. So there we go. Don't do that, and you won't have to do what I'm doing now to fix up, fix my mess up here. Yeah, that's it. So if I hadn't messed things up, this is where you could have put that back together and tightened your bolts up. Since I got away to the JB Weld dries, let's flip this on the other side. 
put me a rag there protect that surface so I don't get no junk on it 10 millimeter and get all my screws broken loose to the finger tight So I'm going to get that right there off. But when I get to the point, like I said, there's a couple bolts that will, whenever you take the clutch and assemble that clutch in that front off right there, the bolts don't come all the way out. So when I get to that point, I'll show you what to do. But what do you know? I got lucky. I guess sanding done a remodel or whatever, a rework on their compressors. And now all the bolts came out. But if they didn't, what you would do, if the bolts come up, hit the clutch, Basically, you just keep picking up the clutch and but loosening the screw at the same time. They'll come all off at one time. So now, be careful taking this out because you got some stuff underneath there that might go flying. So easy with it. Because what you got is a, a wear plate right here for your thrust bearing. And that thing may fall off and go sliding off somewhere who knows what. And then there's your thrust bearing there. So what happens as the clutch spins, as the clutch spins the housing or whatever, this right here is turning, that thrust bearing are also turning, and it makes it pushes those pistons back and forth because you got your push rods and all that stuff down side there. So since this thing's drifting everywhere, I'm gonna spray it off real quick. So you got all that sprayed off and you got an o-ring right there be sure to keep it clean and don't lose it now right there at the end of my allen wrench is where that hole is that we just drilled the top of the quarter 20 just a moment ago and i don't see any debris that came through it i got some junk right there that came off the uh, back cover whenever i took it off but so we're going to spray that out with uh because i got it all the way up here too and that's not aluminum it's just junk the dirtiness out here so honestly if you clean the outside real good before you take it apart it probably do you a lot of good so I'm gonna go ahead and spray all the oil out of this because you don't we're gonna grease these bearings. What you don't want to do is have all this oil inside there with that grease because sometimes some types of oils that mixes with the grease will turn into a gel slime stuff. It doesn't it just doesn't work for you at all. It loses all of its uh, lubricating properties. So brake cleaner, spray the junk out. Now most videos you see on YouTube, what they'll end up doing they'll just lubricate this part right here and not do the rest of it you've seen how much oil was inside this thing when we took it apart okay and i do some hvac work for myself you know like the residential stuff and some actually some big stuff too parts need oil okay so since we're not going to give it an oil source or a method from the outside i want to make sure that everything inside is greased as well as it can be greased and when I say greased I mean using high temp wheel grease wheel bearing grease and I'll show you where all this stuff come come from as I put it back together this part right here really doesn't move because you see a keyway slot right there my thing about this is just simply keep it from um, seizing up down side the board if I ever have to take it apart and service it that goes there then we got a keyway here it sits right there inside that that goes inside the body here there's a key slot right there line up a key and that will slide down inside there then what we got a little ball bearing right here Put this a little right there, and I've taken a brake cleaner and cleaned all these parts. Put plenty of grease around that gear. And actually, the hard parts come here just a minute because all seven of those pistons, we got to line them up with that bore as we're dropping outside there. And that is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we take our ball bearing and just slime a little bit, slime it up a little bit if you want. Slime it up. Put it in place, and we got that. 
put a little dowel right there on top of it because when you put this part right here it sits on top of all that and when you put this on top of that see that little hole right here it might squeeze out of that right there so what you want to do is take make sure you come around this so you got plenty of uh, grease to spread inside that socket there's that okay Now this part here, right there, is the socket that that ball sits into. And you can also see the gears, but those are there meshed together there. Okay, cool. So, if you want to, and I think I will anyway, see if we can cram us a little grease down inside each one of those. And I know some people that just made these videos too, like you are doing too much, you're doing too much. Yeah, it's all right. For some reason I like tinkering with this junk. You just pack it, move it, pack it, move it. Then you got your right here. Take, put your finger, squeeze and push. It'll push it down inside that socket. inside that gear right there the helical cut and put it inside that socket now you want to be sure you use high temp grease even though this body's made out of aluminum this thing can generate a lot of heat if you use it quite a bit like if you're doing a lot of air on tires or something or air tools or something so you want to make sure you use high temp grease. So I'm going to go ahead and grease up the rest of these and I'll be back in a minute because it would be a rather long, boring video watching me do all that. And now we lubricated all, we, now we've greased all the push rods down the sockets of the pistons and up here in the wobble plate, the gear on the wobble plate and where the socket goes for the ball. And now here comes the part that's really, really fun. We got to get all these pistons lined up in those bores and get them to slide down side the board. Yeah. And I'm trying to give you guys the best views possible for the camera. And I'm having to reach around the tripod. And so I'm going to do my best to keep this video ready, PG. Okay, let's get them down inside there. I may end up having to move the camera out of the way because this is going to make things very, very difficult. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to. So, I'm going to, have to go over top of the stair down inside of it to move the pistons around to line them up with the bore so it'll drop down inside. All seven pistons will drop inside the bore. So, when I get to the end of this, the first kind of tricks and stuff like that that you know, I discovered along the way, I'll point them out to you and turn the camera, turn the camera around and point them back to you. I got to get this camera out of the way. I got to be able to see down inside there. And how do you know when it finally seats? You see the grease squirt up right in the middle of it. All right, people, this ain't a whole lot of fun. The best way I can tell you to do this, I had a skewer for, like, you know, doing shish kebabs or food skewer. And as I was working with it, I was taking my fingers on each side of it, holding it like this, and working it from this side right here. So what I would do, I would rock the pistons around until one would seat. Now, if you try to push it straight in the middle like that, it doesn't work quite as well, so you want to get positioned to where you get like one or two pistons on one side started first. Then keep working your way around and you'll just kind of push and rock the piston until it lines up with the board and all of a sudden it'll just pop right in. Uh, keep the plate above the gear and the uh, ball bearing down there just enough that those teeth do not engage. And once you get all your pistons lined up then you can push all the pistons will drop inside the bores and you'll sit right on top of that ball and the gear mesh and all that fun stuff. And if it's positioned in the wrong place and you push on one side, what do you get? Your pistons don't go all the way to the top dead center. So push on that plate right there. And we're going to rotate that plate until our pistons come to top dead center. Where they're close enough. Come on. Where's it at? Like right there. See that one's right there? So now you know that the bot, the socket and the gear and all that stuff seated. Boom, 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 boom. See how that comes up flush? That's what you want to get. 
So now your push rods are is directly in line, the straight up and down by the way I'm holding it. So now we need to put some grease up on the bearing here. We've got a wear plate here or a thrust bearing plate, however you want to call it. Make sure it's clean. This right here is what most people do. Just this right here and the thrust bearing. And most people call it good at that and maybe I'm going completely overkill. Uh, here I'm being all slap some stuff on there. Then we're going to get the thrust bearing. Cram with some grease inside that like you're doing wheel bearings. I scoop it up with my thumb because my thumb does a better job just methodically raking it into the bearing. And see, so you can see it squeeze to the other side, but we're still going to pack this side too. Yeah, we lay that right there. And for kicks and giggles, we'll put some more grease right on top of that. Now we got to take care of this part. This right here is kind of interesting because you got a bearing right there. So just keep cramming grease down inside there as you go around. Go around, pack it all full of grease. Once you get all packed up, rotate this right here around to distribute the grease around there, pack it in. Just push it down inside the bearing. And again, this is one of those steps that a lot of people who do this conversion does not do. So I'm gonna pack this bearing, I'll be back in just a little bit. Okay, once you get that bearing right there packed real well, and what I did, I kept packing it and packing it, then I would rotate the body like this right here, work that grease inside there, pack it again, over and over and over doing that. And once you get that done, be careful of this wear plate here. It's actually keyed in for a position to keep from rotating. You see, it's staying put right now, but sometimes it'll just fall off. And if you wanna take it off, you can, because it just comes off like it right there. And wipe all the junk out underneath it you really don't have to worry about a whole lot of grease underneath that but the only reason I put any grease under it is just to hold it in place when I go to set it down on top of all this I got that You put that back in place like this, and that grease, once it falls inside that groove, that grease should pretty well hold it in place. Then smear some more grease on top of that. And there we go, we got that. Now, one more thing we gotta make sure we do before we put this back together. My ring over here, I gotta clean it up real good, which I wiped it off some, but I gotta wipe it off again real quick, then we'll sandwich it back together. So I started putting this thing back together, and I thought, wait a minute, that plug inside of it, what's the red pitch is that? Could I put a uh, grease fitting inside of it? That would be kind of a cool idea. That way I can inject grease inside there, and as that wobble plate comes around, it can grab that grease and sling it 
and help maybe lubricate some of the bearings and also probably get inside the cylinder walls right there to help uh, lubricate the cylinder walls as they move back and forth. I thought, hey, that could be a good idea. So I got some grease fittings here. Tried to thread them into it. I thought, hmm, yes, yes, that looks close. And guess what? It's not. This is a uh, eighth inch NPT thread. And that is a, I have no idea thread. Because I didn't measure it. But I know what size it ain't, so that's all that really matters to me. So, I want that fitting inside there. And my theory is, this thing's going to be flopping around, doing its thing. And it's going to grab that grease. And it's going to be going fast enough. It's going to be slinging that grease around. That it should sling it into the cylinder walls inside there. To help lubricate the uh, pistons as they move back and forth. But here's my dilemma. Some of you are thinking, uh-huh. You don't got the thing all greased up and you're wanting to tap it? Yes, I am. Here's a little trick for you. Got my little stick right here. I'm going to push that down. Matter of fact, I'm going to take out this thrust bearing first. And set it someplace where it won't get dirty. Like over here on the wobble plate. Over here. Set it right there so it won't go nowhere. And can I get me a clear shot of this? I think I can pull it off. Y'all catching on to what I'm doing yet? Gotta get the grease again. But why do you need grease? We're cutting threads. Pay attention here. Take your paper towel, fold it up good and tight, put you some grease right on that edge right there. Are y'all catching on to what I'm doing yet? I've already got this thing put together. It's all nice and clean inside. It's already greased. I don't want to mess it up. I don't want all those shavings inside there. So here's what we got to do. Take your paper towel, slide it between that wobble plate and that hole right there. And that'll get you just past that hole. This is thick enough and the threads on that grease fitting is shallow enough that I should be able to cut just enough threads into this for that thing to bite, hold, and hold in place and seal to work out for me. Back it up, jig a little bit. Now that grease down side is going to catch all those shavings, so I'm going to get this tapped. I'll be back with you in a minute. Okay, we're back inside my little work desk right now. Dad pulled up, I chat with him for a little bit, and he left, and my buddy Trey, I haven't seen him in a long time. He pulled up, talked to him, and next thing I know, it was dark, and so, yep, let's come in here where some light is. So whenever you take, put that paper towel and you cover it with grease, see that little circle right there? That's the cuttings that coming off the tap that it'll catch, so you don't get it dropped down on the side there. Then you take your uh, paper towel, because you may have, a, whenever you pull the paper towel out from between the wobble plate there, you'll get a little bit of the um, shavings inside there. So then you take fold up your paper towel, get inside there where the hole is, and wipe it out. And you're good to go. I got zero shavings down inside there because they all come out on the paper towel. Ooh, that's still my arm and grease. So now we got to deal with there's a little bit of shavings down inside the hole right there. So what we're going to do with that, get us a little bit of grease on a Q-tip. Not oil, you want that grease because you want those shavings to stick to the Q-tip. But to be honest with you, if you tap it before you put it back together, you ain't got to go through all this crap. So if you want to put that Zerk fitting in, drill and tap it before you put it all back together. Yeah, we'll get inside here and this, we'll get the shavings out right there. You see all the junk residue on the Q-tip where I pulled it out. The only thing I think it's going to do is that right there is the hole where the grease is going to come through. 
So if I take your shoe a little bit of grease inside there and it gets up inside the cavity right here, this wobble plate, whenever you engage the clutch and it starts engaging to pump air, blah, 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 this wobble plate does just that. It wobbles back and forth. It's going to create a turbulence inside there. So my guess is that it'll take that grease and they'll spread it throughout inside here and also lubricate the cylinder walls on the back side to allow the cylinder walls and the pistons to get good lubrication. Okay, we got the other side tightened up. Now we're going to put our valve plate back on. You cannot put it on backwards because this part right here will not fit down inside that. So, as long as your alignment pins are aligned correctly, you're good to go. Check your gasket. Wipe it off good. Make sure it's dry and good shape. Check this side. Checks if you got any debris down inside the valves right there. And we got a line of pin there. Drop it there, turn rotate, boom, it falls right in place. Then we take this, it goes like this. Again, right there, right there is your alignment pins. This sits on there. And get our bolts started by hand. And I'll probably take my little impact and run the rest of the way in, but to make it a little speedier. This right here is one of those little small impacts from uh, Harbor Freight, the little small Hercules 12 volt ones. They don't have a whole lot of torque, so you really don't have to worry too much about stripping these out. I've got like huge impacts, but I like the little small ones for stuff like this. So if you feel froggy, if you want to, you can do it by hand, come back and you know, check all your bolts. Most of the time that right there does about right. So yeah, we're good. And then at this point, we'll take flip this back like this. And clean up some of our oil residue right there. And for kicks and giggles, let me check it. Yeah, it's set. The JB Weld's good. Put that there. And 10 millimeter, tighten that up. Sweet. Now the conversion of this AC compressor to air compressor, not that big of a deal, it's not that hard. Uh, remember that one place I showed you where I JB weld that hole? Don't drill that bigger, you see why now. The back plate takes a 13 millimeter or half inch. The front plate takes a 10 millimeter and you'll need a quarter 20 tap for the little um, screws to go inside that plate to block that off and just simple axle bearing grease, nothing special. So if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you have it, and leave me some cool comments down below. And you better subscribe if you like these uh, onboard air projects, because the next one, we're setting up the air manifold. Don't miss it. So everyone, appreciate you hanging out. Peace. Later, y'all.